With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. This is the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. You know him by now. He's Tennessee Tech head coach Marcus Satterfield. I'm your host, Dylan Vazano. Valiant comeback attempt fell just short Saturday night in Tennessee Tech's first OVC game of the season. It went right down to the wire in, in Richmond, but ultimately it was Eastern Kentucky who claimed a 24-21 victory. So what's up next for Tennessee Tech? Well, it seems like an eternity, but they are finally coming home. That's right. This Saturday night, 6 o'clock, they welcome in a top 10 team in Jacksonville State. They're coming to Cookville. And as always, you should know by now if you've been paying attention, we'll talk about that game a little bit later in the show. Coach will preview that matchup. First things first, we start from the top and, and coach a close one with the Colonels on Saturday. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we're frustrated and uh, never in a million years thought we'd be 0-4 right now. But, you know, we're trying to get our kids to understand, you know, surrender the outcome and, and commit to, to controllables. and. It was a valiant effort. It's one of the best defensive performances I've ever been a part of as a player, a coach, anything. It was unbelievable. Uh, and then, you know, the, the side of the ball that I'm ultimately responsible for, the offense has got to hold on to the football and value the possession of the football. And until we do that, it's going to be long bus rides home. But our kids are already back at it, had good practices, and uh, already started their game prep. And just like every week, they're going to commit to our process and be the best they can and give themselves a chance to win the game on Saturday. Well, you know what happens next. You, you ready to take a look at those highlights? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's roll the film. Introducing the game highlights. That is brought to you by Wendy's of Cookville. Okay, so Tennessee Tech, Eastern Kentucky. This is the first offensive series of the game for the Colonels and coach your guys already flying to the football the pass goes incomplete Tim Boyle you saw the freshman Ethan Wilson come soaring in yeah that was crucial and then uh, they had three plays minus two yards and here we go play one we give them the ball inside the 30 and Defense has to run back out there, and they do a nice job of forcing the field goal. Yeah, this on a third and 16. The pass goes incomplete. You see some pressure by Chris McKeldry. So the defense put back on their heels, but they step up. All sorts of confusion there. Big number 78 on this 51-yard field goal attempt. Thought maybe the, the clock hit zero, but nonetheless, it splits the uprights. Yeah, it hit zero, but we didn't get the call on the road. So a 3 nothing game. Eastern Kentucky, their next drive, and coach one of seven three and outs. In the evening, your defense force. Look at all those white shirts going yeah, to the ball. Tw 21 of 61 plays on defense. We had eight or more human beings on the football, which is remarkable. And, uh, just like the last game, and we, we played 98% of the game well, and then we gave up one. This is one of the two big plays that they got that ultimately won them the game. L.J. Scott, the Louisville transfer, goes 35 <laughs> yards, as Coach said. Really only one of two plays in the game. So at this point, Tennessee Tech is down 10 to nothing. Golden Eagles back up early stage of second quarter. Andre Sale, the freshman QB, the pass is completed to Hunter Coleman, but he does cough it up. So, Coach, once again, your defense is put in a tough spot. Yeah, ball security. Uh, you know, every day we got, we talk about it and got to secure the football. That was a great play by their guy, though, to put his hat on it. And then our defense comes back out there and uh, just does a remarkable job down in the low red zone. That was on third and goal. The stop is made. So Williams hit the 51-yarder, but from 25 out, I'd say that's wide right. So it stays at 10 nothing, Coach. Yeah, that's crucial. And uh, it's a good job, you know, with our guys running off the field, not looking at the ball. That's one of our uh, disciplines that we do, and they executed it well. We keep showing these because that was a third and four, and it goes – Obviously not doesn't get the first down. This is the very final play of the first half. All sorts of chaos. You have Deontay Wilson pick it up after the fumble. Look out, Mr. Official. Maybe help force that fumble there. Now all of a sudden, Scott picks it up. He's running. Remember, final play of the half. Ultimately, nothing happens, though. Yeah, and thank goodness. I mean, I, all I could see was, wow, the, the play before the half of against Ball State. Now this. Are they going to return it for a touchdown? And uh, luckily, our guys got him on the ground, uh, but that was we forced a turnover, then turned it back over. So that one kind of went for not, you know, because there was ultimately a possession change. But it's a good job our guys flying around and knocking the ball out and pounding the flesh like we want to do. So ten nothing at this point, and obviously your defense has kept you in the game. You're going to get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, we went in and told them at halftime like this first drive, we are not going to throw the ball and we're not going to punt the ball. So 
if we get it to fourth and 18 on our minus five, that's on you all. You've got to figure it out. We're not throwing it. And so we came out, and I felt like it gave our offense some juice, and they pushed the ball down the field. It was physical, you know, good blocking assignments. They were, and, you know, we got past the 50 and, and didn't get it on a fourth and two. But uh, that kind of jump-started us a little bit, and hopefully we can continue to grow in the run game like that moving forward. Well, Coach talked about it. Let's see it. Tennessee Tech down 10 nothing. We take you to the third quarter of the football game Saturday night at Eastern Kentucky. So we know that the Golden Eagles are going to run the football. Yeedy Thainrat, the sophomore tailback, he seems to do this once a game. The truck stick Madden style, he ends up getting a big play there, Coach, early in the drive. Yeah, it was a great job by the whole you know offensive line getting surge up front. Seven straight runs out last one. It was fourth and short. The Golden Eagles are unable to convert. So at 10 nothing, Eastern Kentucky gets the football right back. This, I'd say, the second play of the two big ones. That goes Ryan Marcouche, touchdown, 17 nothing, Colonels. Yeah, great play designed by them. Very well executed. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep our eyes not, not on the quarterback but on the receivers. Golden Eagles come right back, though, down 17 nothing. Dantes Bird, his first catch of the second half. The very next play. R.D. Ford, his longest reception as a Golden Eagle. He gets it from sale, 23 yards. Coach, you guys are on the move. Yeah, I mean, when you run the ball a bit, it's amazing what it does uh, for the passing game. It opens up some lanes for you. That's a good job by Goldsmith. He continues each week to just keep getting better and getting better. And then nice job of uh, pushing this ball in. You can see a huge hole there. Freshman Tavin Kilpatrick, Octavian Williams uh, creating. There's 50. There's another freshman. Uh, Curtis Huff, nice job. Third and one, yeah, Goldsmith gets the first down. Then Yeedy Thainrat's first rushing touchdown of the season. So at this point, it's 17-7. to This is the very first play of the fourth quarter. It's fourth down. you got to find a way to make a play. He just throws it up, and it is intercepted right here by Eastern Kentucky. Right. We don't want to throw interceptions, but you can't take a sack on fourth down. you got to just throw it up, and hopefully, you know, they're kind of morons there. They should have knocked it down. That's <laughs> what you're taught to do. But then we get it back. I think they had 9,000 plays inside the 10 here. We kept getting penalties, and... Uh, you know, a, a, a kind of a phantom right here, the pass yeah. interference call where they got trips. Uh, and then they get a new fresh set of downs. Our guys kept playing, though, and made them earn it. Yeah, L.J. Scott right here is about to take it in for a touchdown. But it really the drive, third and goal, you get the stop. Eastern Kentucky calls timeout. They decide to go for it. They get the touchdown. But with Tech down 24-7, the first play of this drive, Dantes Burt. Coach, we say he gets one of these a game. He really does. That is now every game at least a 40-yard reception in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and again, we need that early on. But that was a nice job by our coaches seeing it up top. The safety's driving on the ball. And so we could, you know, pump it like we did against Ball State. And it was, uh, it was a good call. Season high, 57-yard reception. So Tech down 10. Their defense comes up again, stops Eastern Kentucky. So the Golden Eagles late now in the fourth quarter are on the move. Back-to-back -back passes completed to Dante's Bird. You guys, third and goal from the four-yard line. Hunter Coleman, that's a touchdown. It's a three-point game. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great throw and catch. That's a big-time uh, pass concept, low-red pass concept we executed. Then you, you got to get a stop, a first down. The game's over. Third and five, they throw the football. It's incomplete. You guys still have a shot at this thing. Now the next drive, down by three, a timeout left. That is the reception to Dantes Burt. About 15 more yards. You guys would be in business for a field goal. But the very next play, Andre Sale is sacked. It is then followed by a false start. The 10-second runoff. This is a very final play of the game. Just do get the snap off with one second yeah, left. It was, it, was a, it was a debacle. Poor, poorly coached. And that's uh, not just a coach saying that like most coaches do. Like it really was. That was that's on me. And uh, we've got to get to where we can execute at that point in the game. I uh, had a chance to just have to go get a field goal. Just needed 12 or 13 more yards. So that was very disappointing. And yeah, we see the, the final stats here. Tennessee Tech out gaining Eastern Kentucky all over the place. But I, I'm sure you'll point to that bottom with the turnovers again. Yep, it's embarrassing. And I uh, really don't know what else to say. You know, if we talk about it all the time, I feel like it's going to be one of your baseball deals where it just keeps happening. So we're going to coach it and not talk about it and know what's important is taking care of the football. And until we do that, we're, we're not going to win many games. Dante's Bird, pretty good numbers receiving, and I know he had a number of big catches trying to get you guys back in that second half. Yeah, he had a very explosive game, which was huge, and we need that, you know, some accurate balls and great pass protection by, by Andre. Well, the Golden Eagles, they were one of the OVC teams that kicked off their conference slate. There were three other Ohio Valley Conference games, and then Jacksonville State dipped out of conference, put a lid on their non-conference schedule. Let's take a look at what went down. Introducing the OVC scoreboard, that is brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Everyone except for Jacksonville State starting OVC play. 
we take a look. That's an all nationally ranked battle. Number 20, Tennessee State falls to number 24, UT Martin. Impressive win for UT Martin after defeating number 15, Chattanooga, the week before. That's the first time in their program history they have had back-to-back -back wins over nationally ranked opponents. Austin P. after snapping the longest losing streak in the nation with 29 straight losses, they've now got a winning streak. Defeat Murray State 27-7. It was a barn burner in Charleston, Illinois. EIU wins 19-16. They intercept a pass at the one-yard line with just under 20 seconds left to hold on to the win. And then Tennessee Tech's next opponent, Jacksonville State, a good Liberty team, one that came in nationally ranked, one that came in 3-0. Gamecocks win it by the final count of 31-10. to Coach, you see a lot of these other teams, of course, starting OVC play. Yeah, it just shows them I mean, we've got a really good league. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the Tennessee State-UT Martin game that was interesting. Nobody knew, you know, kind of which way that was going to go. That was a big win for Simp and, and those guys. And then Healy, that's a great job getting his second win in conference, you know, first conference win. That's huge for them because they really should have won that game. And to go uh, up there and do it and handle their business was really – a big step for them. And then the Southeast Missouri Eastern Illinois game was back and forth. And then the Jacksonville State, that's a huge win. It could have been worse. And they kind of started, you know, milking the clock in the fourth quarter. But that's a Liberty team that, that beat my man, Coach Rules, Baylor Bears. And they're talented. And Jacksonville State just suffocated them. So that's what we've got coming at us. It's going to be a tough one. But some, uh, some good games and some good conference teams. Oh, you see the scoreboard. Let's take a look at the standings. You're, you're going to see that column on the left finally have some numbers filled in them. First four, 1-0. and oh. Then you got Jacksonville State. Of course, that was a non-conference game. Gamecocks overall record is 2-1. and one. Then TSU, Murray State, SEMO, and Tennessee Tech all sitting at 0-1, Coach. Yep, I don't like the way that looks. <laughs> we got to figure out how to uh, get, get moving up the uh, charts there. You know, this time last year, we were 2-4, and four, I think, at one point in the conference. And found a way or two and three and found a way to scrap back to five and three so we're not going to give up we're going to keep fighting and we know that we've got some uh, some tough games ahead but we got plenty that we can grow on all right well we'll move on then we'll take the graphic off we still have though much more to come who did we take for our player profile you asked who did we put the mic on for one of the golden eagle coaches for practice these questions will be answered when we return on the marcus satterfield show what are you looking for a place to belong? A path to a career? A way to make things better? Do you wonder what opportunity looks like? Explore your answers here. Change your world at Tennessee Tech University. Visit tntech.edu slash change. One hit high and deep. Back of the end zone. Brown got it. Four drives inside. Put it up. See this one swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place, anytime. Find it here. The OBC Digital Network. Hello again on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. It is time to meet one of the Golden Eagles, to get a little bit more of his story. I won't say who it is, but I will tell you, he is leading Tennessee Tech in rushing yards this season. Let's take a look at the player profile. That is brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. Uh, my name is Andrew Goldsmith. I'm a sophomore and I play running back. Uh, my major is uh, sports management, and uh, I plan on being a coach for you know a college or a high school sometime in the future. Um, I'm from Jackson, Tennessee. Um, it's about three hours away, so it's not too close, but not too far. So I mean, I get a little space to you know be able to grow up some and uh, still like get out on my own, but still I'm able to go home on me on the weekends or whenever we get like a little break. Um, I have to say the most influential person in my life would be my mom, just because a uh, single mom, she uh, pretty much raised me by herself, and uh, I just you know, want to make her proud and uh, try to help her out as much as possible. Um, I just want to be the best player I can be, you know, um, continue working hard uh, for the team, myself, and uh, just the fans and my family. 
Um, I think this year's team is uh, different from last year because we are a lot more disciplined and uh, focused on the task at hand. Uh, Coach Satterfield is really uh, in, uh, enabled the process in us uh, to uh, trust and uh, stay focused. Um, I think the mentality for the team is to uh, be physical, stay focused, um, work hard, and uh, play the play as hard as possible. He has been real fun to watch Coach Andrew Goldsmith the last couple of years. I love that play against Ball State, zig and zagging all over the place. I'm sure he's a joy to coach. He is great, you know, great kid, great parents. And, uh, you know, he, he was a high school quarterback. And his senior year, that's all he played was quarterback, Wildcat quarterback. So. Uh, we always have an emergency quarterback with us, on, you know, at any time. Let him get a couple snaps each week. So we've got that in our back pocket if we ever need it. But he's been, uh, you know, he's grown up so much. This time last year, he was in the doghouse with me all the time and immature and just, you know, kind of like um, A.J. Flemister we were talking about earlier today. I mean, he, something clicked right in the middle of the season and just his maturity, his competitiveness, his toughness. And, uh, you know, he just keeps getting better each week. I can't wait to see where he ends up this season. And you got with Edie Thainrat, preseason all OVC. It's really been cool to see just like a one-two punch between those two guys the last couple of years. No doubt. And uh, both can, you know, they're, they're physical runners. They have, they're great in pass protection. They're smart, high football IQ kids. Uh, you know, they're, they, they catch the ball out of the backfield, which is crucial in our offense. So uh, they, they both are going to, if we can hold on the ball, <laughs> give us a chance to win at some point. But we're, we're really glad that, that Goldsmith's with us. And we had to beat Eastern Kentucky and him. Uh, for him in recruiting our first year. So they may have got us this weekend, but we got him last year and we got Goldsmith. So we're one up. There you go. Well, it is now time to see our mic'd up segment. Which coach did we put the mic on? Let's just show it to you. Introducing Mic'd Up, which is brought to you by Pepsi. Let's go. Hey. Physical mindset, all right? From start to finish today. Hey, you play good Saturday because you practice good all week. It starts today. Get the ball out! Get the ball out! Get it out! Take away inside leverage. Jo uh, AJ, inside leverage. Inside leverage. Don't, don't get beat across your face. Make him throw that play ball. 10 yards. 10 yards off of Jordan Jackson, Slater. Uh, you got to be on the line. Go, Slater. Go, Slater. Go, Slater. Got a bid. Got a bid. Go. Run now. Hey, ball. Ball, 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 ball. Hey. Hey, nowhere to throw the ball right there. You're good, man. You're good. You ain't got nowhere to throw the ball. Let's go. Ah, I don't know if you made that tackle, Slater. Hey, do you feel how you reached out right there? Just keep running. Keep running through them. Right there. Hey, you got better at tackling every week. You know, hey, did you eat this morning? Are you sure? You're walking around like you had not ate nothing. Let him go. Go, go, Pip. Ah, Pip. Man, you were perfect right there until he broke. Hey, did you feel yourself like reach out and try to grab him? That's what, hey, that's what we were just working on. Keep your arms going out of your brake. Drive his back pocket hard for three, okay? You were perfect until he broke out there. Get the ball out! One nickel! One nickel! Come on out, hey, start cheating a little bit in his cadence. Start cheating the cadence. Let's compete. 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 Justin Matheny, a good young coach. I know that he spent time here as a student, director of football operations last year, and now part of the defensive staff. Yeah, he's a, he is an institution himself. And, you know, <laughs> that, that's free advertising for when he, you know, runs for mayor here in about 10 years. Uh, that's what he's, he's destined to be, I believe. But a you know, great family. Uh, you know, him, him and his wife, Candace, just got married this summer. We were all able to go, you know, go to the wedding and hang out, our old staff. And, uh, just, just really blessed to have him part of our staff. You know, he was he was awesome for us when we got here, because he knew everything, knew you know knew his way around, and was really uh, influential in, in all of our decisions we were making, and recruiting, and where we were staying, where we were eating. And uh, it was, I'm glad that I had an opportunity to promote him back on the field this year, because he's a really good coach, loves loves Tennessee Tech, loves you know loves his kids, and uh, is really committed to being the best coach he can be. And, and you know he's going to keep getting better and better. 
but it's like I give him a hard time. Like, it's not like I'm ever going to get him to ever move out of Cookville because he's going to be the mayor here once. So, Mr. Shelton, better watch out. You better watch out. You heard it here first. He, I guess he's running, what, 10 years or so? 10 years, yeah. Okay, okay. Heard it here first. We still have much more to come, including the previewing of the matchup this Saturday night, Tennessee Tech and Jacksonville State. That comes, though, after the break right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. It is time for our show to see what else happened in Tennessee Tech Athletics. Some exciting big time cross country news. So Director of Athletics, Mark Wilson, he's running up the stairs. He's got you covered. Let's take a look at what he had to say. Introducing the Golden Eagle Update, brought to you by TTUSports.com. Men's cross-country student athlete Gilbert Boyd had an exceptional showing at the Florida Gator Mountain Dew Invitational. He won that event, propelling the Golden Eagles to a second-place finish behind the winner, North Florida. They beat SEC opponent Florida, who finished third, Strong, strong showing for Wayne Angel squad. Brandon Sheplak and Sammy Kit Prairie finished fifth and sixth for the Golden Eagles. This weekend, they'll travel up to Bloomington, Indiana to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. On the women's side, freshman Purity Sanga finished third individually in Florida's Mountain Dew Invitational. The team was 17th. Boyd and Sanga will be named Ohio Valley Conference Runners of the Week. The Golden Eagles soccer team had a hard-fought tie with Murray State last Thursday night at the Tennessee Tech Soccer Complex, 0-0 after two overtimes. This Friday, they'll travel to Belmont to take on the Bruins, and then they'll host Austin Peay Sunday night at 6 o'clock on the Tennessee Tech campus. Come on out and show your support. The Golden Eagle volleyball team opened Ohio Valley Conference play, losing to Jacksonville State by a score of 3-0, then hit the road to take on UT Martin, losing by a score of 3-1. This weekend, they will travel to Kentucky and take on Eastern Kentucky and Moorhead State. Women's golf had a strong showing at the Chris Bannister Fall Classic. All their hard work and practice is really, really paying off. Great, great job for Polk Brown and his squad. Eduardo Romania had a strong showing at the Oracle ITA Masters for the tennis team. He took on some of the top talent from around the country. He, he lost one, won one, lost one to go one and two on the weekend. A great, great fall for him. Eduardo's doing a phenomenal job. Back down to you, Dylan. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you getting up there, letting us know what happened. Golden Eagle Athletics, Coach Eduardo Mena, this tournament for tennis, like, real big deal, but he got to go to Malibu. Like, some guys just have all the luck. Some guys just uh, catch all the breaks. You're right, while we're blood, sweat, and tears here <laughs> in Cookville, they're uh, got their feet up in Malibu, hanging out with some Maui gyms on, and <laughs> just being cool. That's what they do well, though. Oh, you gotta love it. All right, you know what time in the show is. You got a football game this Saturday. It's back in Cookville for, it seems, the first time in ages. Are you ready to break down this matchup, Tennessee Tech and Jacksonville State? I think so. It's going gonna, it's, it's <laughs> gonna to be a fun breakdown. This is a pretty good team, so I'm ready when you are. Okay, let's do it. Why not? This week's opponent, and that is brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Well, a top 10 team is Jacksonville State. They, of course, have been the class of the league the last few seasons. This is filmed from last year when Tennessee Tech went up there. But you're not going to see that guy, Eli Jenkins. He is no longer on the team. Or that guy, Josh Bars, that just blocked. That's good. They're, uh, they're still super talented, and uh, they're trying to find their quarterback uh, for the future. But, you know, they have two they're playing with right now, that, and they're both, you know, above average players. It's just when you're compared to this cat, I mean, this is – one of the best that's ever played the game yeah. at the FCS level and just single-handedly beat teams last year. Uh, but they're talented. They're huge up front. They're mature up front. They got the best back, one of the top probably five backs in the country of all of college football. Uh, you know, and on defense, they're, they're long, lengthy, athletic, mean, physical, uh, in your face. They disturb you the whole night. They have a unique defensive front that's hard to attack. And, uh, you know, we're going to have our hands full. Is it? Is it? Is it impossible? No, it's not impossible. It's just we got to go out and execute and, and beat our demons and hold on to the football. But half the battle with these guys are you got to, you know, your kids have to understand that they can go win the game. 
They don't have to do anything special. They just have to do what they do, you know, hold on to the football and look up at the scoreboard at the end and see what happens. But it's, this isn't like we're playing Alabama, mm-hmm. but they are talented. Yeah, it seems like a game like this with an opponent. I mean, you always preach and talk about it's about us, it's what we can do, but it just seems like in a game and a matchup like this, it's that much more imperative. No question. And you want to get the taste of 0-4 out of your mouth, go and perform well in this game in front of your home crowd. That We've not been back in, you know, here in a month, and uh, we've got frustrations that we want to we want to get out of our, our system, and you know you can you can make yourself feel a lot better if you just you don't have to go be superhuman. You don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to do anything special. Just do your job, and and you might have a chance to win the game in the fourth quarter if we have a good week of game prep. Well, you brought it up. We've been talking about it. The fact that you guys are at home for the first time since August 31st, I- I'm sure you're pretty fired up about that. Yeah, those bus drives, <laughs> uh, you know, bus rides are are getting long, but. Luckily, you know, since when I was playing in college, we have live TV, so we can watch all the football games and stuff. That's and nice. that's, that's good for the coaches and the kids to be able to keep up with what's going on. But, you know, to get in front of our fans again, hopefully we'll have a, a crowd. I understand that nobody wants to come watch an 0-4 team, but hopefully they'll give us the benefit of the doubt and come support us and help us do something special because if we have the energy of the crowd, you know, and the students, then that, that will help us tremendously. Uh, as far as, you know, competing in this game and keeping our energy up for this game. It would mean a lot to our kids. Jacksonville State, they come in. Of course, this is their first OVC game of the season. They've got a 2-1 record. They beat nationally ranked Liberty. They beat nationally ranked Chattanooga. And then their one loss was to Georgia Tech in a game that they were down just 7-3 at the half. So, of course, a pretty good team. And and just one more, you you talked about Eli Jenkins from last year and and the the notes and, and how special he is. He's second all-time in terms of total yardage behind a guy named Jimmy Garoppolo, mm-hmm. and he's the first guy to win back-to-back OVC Players of the Year since a guy named Tony Romo. So Garoppolo, Romo, pretty good company. Wow, EIU, huh? Yeah, EIU. And uh, the co- Coach Garoppolo has never lost an OVC game since he's been the head coach, so he's got to lose one sometime. Hopefully <laughs> hopefully it's this week. But, uh, they're, they're talented, but we're going to compete, and if, if the people just come, you know, just give us a chance, come out and check us out, if, tell them all the time. Stay for half. If you don't like it, leave. We're cool, you know. But but just come, show up. You know, be there for the kickoff. Be there for the eagle walk. Uh, help us build something here, you know. Because again, this we got a chance to build a very special place here. But we need everybody's help. Well, I'll be there. Uh, obviously, you'll be there. I'm thinking about being there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll well, be there. I think I'll be. Game there. time decision, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Well, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Coach will be there. We'll have the game. It'll be six o'clock. Tucker Stadium, Tennessee Tech and Jacksonville State. How can you watch it, WCTE? How can you listen to it? 98.5 KISS FM. And as always, you can read all about it in the Cookville Herald Citizen. This is going to do it for the Marcus Satterfield Show. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.